Welcome, everybody. I'm Love Coach Scott Katamas, and it is Friday night, January the 8th, and tonight is The Awakening World. It's our first Friday night broadcast, and I'm really excited um, because uh, I've been doing a show on Friday nights for almost two years, but now it's a Zoom meeting, not a Zoom webinar, so we're going to be able to see a lot of our friends on camera, not just our panelists. And also, it's our first night of a weekend dedicated to the Weevolution. And um, we have th three panelists with me, uh, my co-host, Louisa Stowe, the wonderful Michelle Anderson, the wonderful Amakela. And I'm going to bring on Larissa right off the bat. Um, she is who's been co-creating this wonderful weekend. Uh, most of the guests that you're going to see uh, throughout the weekend are friends of hers. Louisa, tell us what is the Weevolution? What, what is it? And tell us about it. The Weevolution is truly us opening our hearts, letting our hearts lead us, letting the mind drop into the heart, and joining our hands, linking arms with one another in a unified vision, walking forward and looking towards what we want to create in this world rather than looking at what we don't want to create. <laughs> so that is, that's what's pulling us forward. And when we begin to see this piece of like what's in our hearts as a collective, we're going to create it. It's absolutely positively destined to happen. I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell, Scott. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we're going to be talking about it throughout the night for sure. Um, and I tell you what, why don't you introduce Michelle um, and then we'll ask her a question, but uh, uh, I'll let you introduce her. Michelle Anderson is a dear sister of mine. I adore her. We met years ago. Um, I don't even know how long ago <laughs> we met, but we first met at a show. I think I was performing, right? And you came and, and we made this incredible eye contact with each other and, and had a, a heart connection. And I have been blown away to watch Michelle really be one of those leaders in life that brings people together, that bring, that she has a way of coming so deeply from the heart that she unifies people, even if they have different beliefs. And I have found her to be so inspiring, like one of the most inspiring people that I know. And I really look to her um when i am like in a place where i'm i need to get even more grounded into my heart michelle's mm -hmm. somebody i will reach out to and i love what she's doing in the world her and eric rankin together are producing a show called awakening code radio that is out of laguna and i've had like the blessing of being on their show and it's a show that raises the vibration and consciousness on the planet so she's very committed to the Weevolution. She has been like a transmission of the Weevolution. So I really felt it fitting that she um, join us this weekend. Mm -hmm. I am also a big fan of Michelle Anderson. Um, I so appreciate the work that you do uh, with your radio show, with Disclosure Fest, um, uh, the work you do with Neil Gar. And I'd love to ask you, we were talking just before coming on camera, Mm -hmm. about how embracing the revolution has impacted your life. And you'll be able to share some really cool stories. And I'm wondering if you'd be willing to share that with, with our audience here. I would love to. First off, thank you so, so much. I'm, I'm so honored to be a part of this. And it, it, it comes at a time where I really needed it. It's a blessing for me to be in, in community and feeling the revolution being birthed right now through each one of us um, because these times have been a bit challenging um, and I, I've been riding the, the waves of that you know having some highs and some lows watching what's been happening especially when I see people being divided that's that's been the thing that that hurts my heart the most so when Larissa shared she shared about the revolution um, vision that she had Men, uh, when she had her kundalini explosion um, a while ago. And then we had her on our show on Awakening Code Radio um, the last 
two Tuesdays of 2021. So we had her on, had um, her and Ben John for winter solstice. And so I felt those energies rising as we spoke about it. I could feel it being birthed, you know, through each one of us, through our bodies. And so this week, I've been talking about this program and talking about the Weevolution with a lot of people. And right before we went on to the meeting, I, um, I was sharing that it's like instant manifestation of what our heart is desiring in the moment and how we can collaborate and weave with, with, um, other, with others. And um, I went on a hike on Sunday and the night before I told my husband, I really wanna ride a horse. I, I miss riding and I really wanna go back to a dude ranch and ride a horse. So I go out on my hike and randomly just happened to find someone there that had two horses that were both saddled. And the second rider had to um, no show, she no showed for this, this man. I didn't know this man, but my, my intuition told me he was safe and he was a nice person. And after talking for a while, I said, you know, I, I feel like I, manifested you because I really want to ride a horse and I would love to ride with you. And I got to ride for like three hours on Sunday and I could feel there's like this co-creative energy. We were talking about things and, you know, coming from two opposite perspectives um, in some of the things that we were talking about, but having that meeting of the hearts, you know, that we both had a love for horses. So we, we landed on the place where we were connected and connecting. And I thought that was interesting. And I told him about this idea and he loved it. And then, um, you know, just seeing there was, there was another thing. I didn't even share this earlier, but I had talked about on the show with Larissa, the last show we did of the year, I had talked about wanting to start 2022 off with what we want to bring into creation, what we want to create rather than all the stuff that we're not liking in the world. But what do we love? What are we passionate about? What, how can we change systems that aren't working for us anymore that seem to be um, dividing people? And one of the things I mentioned on that show was that I heard about this woman, her mother told her about me and she contacted me, but we hadn't connected yet. And she told me that she was pulling her children out of the public school system. And it was a lot to imagine homeschooling, but she had this idea for something called a Liberty School where parents are, um, you know, they're, they're, operating under the homeschool paradigm, but they're having teachers that aren't feeling comfortable in the public school setting anymore with the curriculum and with some of the mandates. They have left the public school arena and, and they're looking for the right match. So this woman, Sarah, I think her name is Sarah Beck. She started something called Liberty School. She's got 20 kids. She's here in Orange County. She's hired some teachers. She's a principal and a teacher and a mother, an anthropologist. <laughs> and she's, um, she's started this school in a park overlooking the ocean, <laughs> you know, what a, with a, you know, three, a lot of playtime and, and um, you know, they have a covered area. She's looking for a building now, but um, she's just doing it flying by the seat of her pants. And I just admire people that are looking to, to, to weave new energies right now and to start and birth new systems. So, you know, I asked her, I, I, I seem to be a connector of sorts. And so I knew a few people that I thought might be a fit for her. And I threw those names out. She already knew those people and had already tried those options. So I think she's going to be my next guest on Tuesday night on the show. Oh, wow. See if we can find her the the right schoolhouse, you know, to land her uh, a, a good fit for 
weaving with some of the other people that have that same vision. So to me, that's the weevolution is coming into um, embodiment because we're talking about it. We're breathing life into it. And right now I have goosebumps right now because I really, I really felt what Larissa was sharing with me that came through and it just feels like this is the next level for what humanity is seeking because if we don't come together in this way, the potential is there for our race to become extinct. And I think a lot of us are feeling that. A lot of us are feeling that we've got to do something differently. And um, and so we're, all, we're coming together and, and birthing new systems. And to me, that's what the Weevolution is all about. I feel it. Yeah, thank you. I love well, it. <laughs> goosebumps love it. are going to happen for many of us with the introduction of my next guest. Um, and then we'll come back, of course, Michelle and Larissa and, and all of you. And I'm going to read some of your comments uh, in a moment. But I want to introduce my other guest for tonight, our other guest panelist, I should say. And this is I'm Michaela Gaston. Um, and she, as you're about to see, like Michelle and Larissa, is a delightful soul. Um, and coming together, you know, like Michelle shared, kind of like the magical part of it, when we're able to, you know, open our hearts and come together. And, you know, the, the fellow with the horse was safe. And, and that's beautiful when that happens. Well, Michaela is going to share a little bit about kind of the hard part of um, sometimes it's very difficult to come together when we're confronted with people that have heavy judgment, or even racism. And uh, Ama Kayla is the survivor of a very violent racist uh, attack. Uh, it was a hate crime and a group of young white men literally tried to kill her by running her over. And it's, it's, uh, it's so hard for someone like myself who's never experienced anything like that. I mean, I've, I'm, a, I'm a tall white man filled with privilege all my life. And so I want to ask you, Michaela, I've, I've had a chance to work with you enough to see what a, a big heart you have, but how have you managed to make that transition from having had that experience and still having an open heart towards a white man, towards people after what you went through? Um, and so I'm going to turn the floor over to you for a little bit here. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. It's just a little light jump from like lovely <laughs> horses to truck running over. Um, I, I, honestly, I got to tell you, first of all, I really do believe that part of all of our weevolution slash evolution slash going from, you know, caterpillar to pupa and chrysalis and then becoming a butterfly, all of that transformation energy is a powerful lesson in how we can all continue to grow, evolve, and be in the moment like bamboo in the wind. And so when that fabulous moment of transformation, who, which by the way, let me just let you know, there's a fabulous astrologer. I don't know if you all know Caroline Casey. She is yeah. fierce, fierce, fierce. Well, don't you know that sister? I'm the one that sings her intro song and we've worked together for 25 years. And I went to go see her after the accident many years later. And she was like, oh, you're Pluto in retrograde, blah, 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 such and such time. What kind of spiritual trip did you go on? And I was like, I have, I went to Egypt. I don't know what kind of spiritual trip you're talking about. And she was talking about the accident and it was literally in my chart. So all of that to say is that I do believe that we have a divine connection with, you know, kind of like a spider web. We all have these ways that we move in this realm towards our goal and our destiny. And when you embrace that beauty, when you walk in a space where you choose to dive as opposed to flail and fall, when you move in the world in that way and you, you know, and I know all of you all know Abraham Hicks and you don't stare at that grass and go, why aren't you growing? Why aren't you growing? Why aren't you growing? You go, I love you. Let's grow grass. Let's grow. That's how you transform hatred and you compost it and turn it into love and forgiveness. Now, I'm not trying to say that it was easy, but I really do think about people like Harriet Tubman, 
you know, honey, what does she have to go through seriously to like get to the other side, choose freedom as opposed to staying stuck in the, the, oh my God, I'm a slave. You know, you have to make your way. And that kind of grit and resilience is what makes you a survivor and a thriver. And the way that you do it is when you have allies like all of you, people who believe in love. We love evolution, we love evolution. All these things were coming together in this time when we realize we will not stand for another George Floyd. We will not stand for another insurrection on, on you know, congressional steps. We won't stand for that anymore because we believe and we know the power of love. You know, one of the things that I do as a cultural ambassador for the arts, uh, for the State Department, is I go to these places that have been ravaged by war, and these people are frozen and and in fear. They're just completely in this this place where their their li- their their life and their liberty and all of their freedoms they've been they're just they're jeopardized populations and particularly the children. And so they're, you know, I've worked with Iraqi refugees in Lebanon, Jordan, and Syria. I've been to Tajikistan, Kazakhstan right now. I've been to Kazakhstan like 10, 12 times. I knew the former president. Having these moments, absolutely, thinking about how we have to, as all of us here, as holders of love, love warriors, bringing together our voices, our energy to stay activated so that we won't stand for things like that. We must come together and talk about stopping what's happening, the atrocities in Kazakhstan, the atrocities happening here. So there's no time, quite frankly, Scott, to stay caught in the muck and mire of, oh, this happened to me. There's too much got to go and on. We have to yes. move because we who believe in freedom cannot rest, y'all. If we really want to make change in the world, if we want to continue to believe in the power of things beyond. And so right now I'm in this place of being beyond. I want to be, uh, be beyond the ists and isms of my body wrapper and the ridiculousness that our dominant culture has infused us with for so long because it's been based in fear. There's no time for that anymore. The quickening is happening now. The weevolution is gathering. We're all here. We're all here together. We're here, we've got rockets of desire blasting out into space and we're calling in the love. We are calling in the connectedness. We're calling into the ways of being that allow us to remember like the mycelial network. We have one message and we must save the manatees. We must save the global climate. We must, you know, there's things that have to be fixed. So we don't have time to mess around with all oh, that silly boy that ran me over. I don't have time for that. So even when I was in the hospital, they were like, oh, aren't you angry? I was like, yes, and I got to get out of here because I have yeah. things to do. There's yeah. too much happening. Yeah. So when people say, you know what I'm saying? When people yes, say yes. they're bored during COVID. I'm like, honey, you're not busy enough. You, know, you haven't picked up a book, read a newspaper, let's go because we have to gather, we have to continue to move and feel the strength of our force, the power of our love, the power of togetherness, the power of all of our minds, believing that we could be something bigger than what we've been told we're limited to be. So there's a very long answer to your fabulous short question. Toot, toot, yes. Mic drop. (laughs) Bam, and good night. I'll see y'all later, have a good night. Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for just shining that light and being such modeling, modeling mm. what it looks like to be one who is able to not only um, forgive, mm-hmm. but to turn what happened to you to transmute that and I and I, ha- I sense that that happening to you may have may have given you even more fuel in in your desire and your passion for peace. Honey, you called it together. Because when you die and come back, you don't give a diggity dang dang. You know what I'm saying? That's There's right. no time to right. mess around. So let me tell you this really funny story. You know, this is back in the day. I don't know how old you all are. I'm 140. So, you know, I, I know I look good. <laughs> I've got great lotion, honey. But listen, I w- I, this is back in the day when on the news, they would do the grand reveal of like who the guest speakers were. They would pull the curtain back and they would move the, 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 the uh, stage forward. Do you all remember this? Like back in the day on the news? Anyway. So I was back there and they decided it was going to be a good opportunity for people to have like conversations with like people who were like in opposition. So they had a liberal and a conservative. They had a Democrat and Republican and they had me. And remember now from D.C., they had me and they had the Grand Wizard of the KKK. 
And we're all in this, yeah, honey. So we're all in these little pairs, right? So we're backstage on the curtain and everybody's back there planning their little conversations of the liberal and, you know, conservative. They're like, I'm going to say this and you're going to say this. And the Democrat and the Republican, I'm going to say this and this. And he was just staring at the screen, at the curtain. It was right here in all of his regalia and me next to him. And I remember thinking in that moment, this is so stupid. Like, if this is really the ridiculousness of the social construct of race. If we were in a bar and we were just hanging out and we were just, and he didn't have all that madness on, I would probably just talk to him. Like, what's up, man? How you doing? So I said, I'm going to, I'm going to do a social experiment right now. I'm going to conjure a connection and find a way for us mm. to talk about something. So I said, excuse me, I have a question. And he turned and looked at me with this, you know, right through these little things. And <laughs> I said, I, and I kid you not, this is exactly what happened. I said, how do you keep your whites so white? And literally the same body language that I'm about to do right now, he did like this, Clorox honey. And I went, oh, <laughs> you are a part of the rainbow connection. Oh, I, we could talk about, this. and do you know, we sat back there and talked about laundry. So by the time they pushed us out in front of everyone, you know, they were over there, these, every little doublet was talking and arguing around. But when it came to us, he was like, well, I don't know about my sister here, but this is what I experienced. And I was like, well, I don't know about my brother here. And we were too nice to each other that at the commercial break, the, the, the news station was mad at us. They were like, what's wrong with you all? Y'all supposed to be fighting. I was, I was like, this is about peace and love and sister and brotherhood. We're, we have elevated and we elevated through laundry. And in that moment, I realized I have to, I have to always sing to the inner rainbow unicorn. Everybody has an inner child so when donald trump was spewing all his madness i would just sing to his inner rainbow child i was that's like right. i'm just humble and i'm gonna sing i'm gonna sing a lullaby to you every night baby and that's how i'm going to find compassion forgiveness peace love and understanding mm. for real we, we, you and i you and i we're like the i'm like yes okay. <laughs> that's it that's, that's the it. whole thing that's the whole thing is, is that you see no matter what you see that god spark that's you know? right you know, and you just, you hold it, you hold right. it, and That's you refuse right. to see anything else. That's right. That doesn't mean you condone people's actions or behavior. No, 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 no. But what we That's do right. is when we see the highest in one another and we hold it and we hold it, we begin to pull it. We begin to pull it because all of that That's is right. in us because we are everything. That's right. That's right. And you sing to the, to the, to the baby before it got damaged, right? Yes. We all have this place where we come into the world pure and lovely and joyful and mwah, and before the <coughs> you start singing around that to that heal that that's how we weave all these people together through that love. That's, that's so beautiful. And the research reminds me of your song. Love, 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 love your enemies. And yeah. ooh, love till there is no enemy. Till you there know? is no enemy. Till there is none. You know, that, that song is probably our most played song on Awakening Code Radio because of what it does. It just transmutes all of that ugliness and brings us back into our oneness. Yes. And God, oh, I love that story. Thank <laughs> you. And I love I love how Wanda wrote in the message in the chat. She said you turned a mess into a message. Right. Oh, that is that cute. Chat. Oh, but Wanda, that, that is a t-shirt, honey. We gonna make yeah. that into a t-shirt. Turn a mess into a message. Go, Wanda. Isn't that a good one? <laughs> That's a you good know, I wanna, one. I want to read actually a few other comments that have come in, because we are going to make tonight very, very um, participatory with our audience. And I'm so grateful to see so many of our Global Peace Tribe friends are with us tonight. Uh, and welcome those of you that are new, and welcome all of you that are kind of our regulars. Um, Dia writes, uh, so happy to see and experience the joyous face of Amakela, the way that you mm. love, love, love to us all. Namaste and gratitude. Dia, dia. Yes, yes. <laughs> Mark Danisovsky says, yes, a fantastic, powerful message. A lot of people, mm. how they love you, Mark. they're appreciating you. Um, and, you know, back to the question of what does the revolution mean? A couple of important comments that came in. Jeffrey Colbrook wrote, um, uh, where's Jeffrey's? Uh, he had one. The one about uh, if you're interested in science from the sim, is that that? The, no, that was something different. Oh, here it is, it's Mystic Abbott, actually. Our beloved Mystic Abbott, Jerry Anderson, maybe we'll hear from Jerry directly, writes, our team is going to the spiritual kitchen and making the coffee 
for those who are awakening in this world to not be in the upside down part of it, but inspiring and creating the revolution. Beautiful. Um, Dan Castle wrote, the revolution means evolving together. Carol writes, spirit, soul, calling forth, heartfelt love, flowing from the inside into the outer realm to create a deeper connection with the planet and the universe. Um, and, uh, oh, Jeffrey had written, revolution emerges out of our love evolution that yeah. the universe supports as our purpose. Um, and uh, so. Oh, we're, yes. We're, and I, and it's almost eight o'clock. So. <laughs> yes. Take <laughs> so it away. Take it away. We have three minutes. So I have, I need to explain to everybody. We are, you know how you have probably heard about how people were giving a shout out around 8 p.m. for our frontline people in the world. Well, to continue that, but for the evolution, to give ourselves permission to like shake and totally express and let go of the tension and come together in that expression of letting it all go and releasing that the shoulds and the old paradigm and opening to that joy and self-expression that we are. I invite you all at eight o'clock and we're doing this in two minutes and I got a knock at the door because we've been doing this for like for nights straight now and committing to this as a practice for creating even more of the evolution and spreading this. So I invite you to make sounds with us. I'm going to go open the door and let people in that want to participate my family. <laughs> And we can do this for just like, you know, 30 seconds or so together. Okay. So, so just to be clear, people are invited to howl or to bang. Yes. To howl yes. or to bang. I'm a howler I'm myself. <laughs> um, I'm a Kayla. Are you a howler, a banger, or both? I'm a shaker, baby. Mm. You're a shaker. All right. There we go. <laughs> um, um, and how about you, Michelle? Howling, banging, what are you going to be doing? I would say all of the above. <laughs> okay, great. And I'm going to actually go ahead and I'm going to put the camera on gallery view. Uh, I will hide the uh, people that are not turning their cameras on, but I want to invite people to invite their turn on their cameras. So we're now on gallery view. And so we're all going to take a minute to howl and shake and dance and shiver and quiver and do whatever. We feel Go so inspired to hear, all right? All right. And people can even turn their camera, their uh, unmute. So. Here we go, it's eight o'clock. themselves again. Um, you know, um, so if people could mute, that'd be great. That was fun. We're going to do this now. We're going to have to do it tomorrow night, too. So yes. this is going to yes, become yes, a thing. Yes, yes, every, we are, we're doing it at eight o'clock every night. And we usually do it in our front yard and we're inviting our neighbors and we've had neighbors come out and do it. And I'm putting it on next door, the app, and just like, let's do this. Let's release together. Let's Let's raise our vibration and, and feel the gratitude for life and for each other. And let's let go of the social masking that we do. And just like we're all, you know, we all get stressed out. It's like shake out those shoulds together, you know, and what happens when we give ourselves that kind of permission to be seen and to release together. How powerful is that? I would love to. I, I got a thought while we were howling, you know, I was thinking about wolves that howl. And I was thinking about what Alma Kayla had shared with us. And I'd like to share a little. This is the um, puppet that I got from Marshall Rosenberg when I was 
traveling with him and teaching nonviolent communication. This is the puppet. This represents the jackal. And the jackal represents that part of us that we all have that can um, be judgmental and critical of ourselves and of others. And I always like to remind people, and I'm Michaela, I think you'll especially appreciate this, that when somebody's jackling at you, when somebody's coming at you and saying, I hate you and you just, I can't stand you and just go away, go away. If you remember that underneath the big jackal, there's really a little one that's going, oh, Oh my gosh. I miss you so much and I just, I want you to love me and oh. <laughs> You're so a good howler, Scott. The little jackal <laughs> inside the big jackal. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I love it. And the jackal's name is what? Jackie McJack Jack or what, what is, what are their names? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so beautiful. I love that. I have, I've been uh, doing a little trick for a long time and I have people that go, I still, when my husband is going after me, I picture you pulling out the little jackal and I remember, all right, it's just, it's his inner five-year-old that wants to know that I still love him. Totally. Uh, that's it. That's it. Absolutely. That is it. That's, oh, I think really that's, it. The, that's the easiest cue that we can give to anybody is that if whoever is coming at you with anger and you want to respond in like, and that's our human tendency, a natural thing that we do is to respond with the same energy. If you can train your brain and remap your brain to immediately see that, see that person as a child that was being hurt themselves, that's why they're lashing out at you. Then what do you want to do to that child? Do you want to hug them? In that moment of anger and angst, all you want to do is come back in and hug them because that's who's really speaking in that moment is that angry or hurt or sad little girl, little boy. So this was perfect. I think we're all really on the same page. What a way to kick it off. That was fun. It reminds me of <laughs> Larissa used to always get us to bang on our chest. And <laughs> off, you know? Yes. Yeah, same thing. We got it. We got to let it go. And it's, you know, we, and we can use it as well, not only letting go, but bringing in the gratitude, like, you know, we have gratitude for all of those people that have been on the front lines, you know, all of our nurses and all, all of the people who've, who've really put themselves in situations, you know, we, it's beautiful to give gratitude for them. And it's beautiful to give gratitude for life and for each other. And for where we're going, where we're headed, you know, like to see this contraction that we're in right now as an opportunity to go as far back, you know, to see what we, we've been blocking, what we've been oppressing, repressing within the unconscious, making, transmuting that, healing that, and then bam, we're going to hit that mark going into the fifth dimension together. Mm. Beautiful. I, I want to read um, a few comments because I'm going to keep bringing it back to our audience. And yes. while I read these, I want to invite our panelists to think of a story that you want to share, a true story of the revolution, how you've lived it, something that's happened, how it's supported you. And then after each of you have shared whatever story comes to mind, um, we'll open it up to some of our audience members who also might have stories or fables about the revolution. Uh, Terry Russo, one of our regulars, hi Terry, writes, yes, when patients get angry, we try to imagine them as wounded children, and that helps us to stay compassionate. Mm -hmm. um, JD writes, this reminds me that it is also a way, pounding the chest is a way to stimulate the thymus gland, which is underneath the sternum, and that supports our immune system. Um, Dia writes, this is training my heart to hear the baby loving Mo. Beautiful. And Wanda writes, behold the Christ-like love in everyone, unconditional love. So there's some you know, beautiful comments. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Mm. It's exciting. It's really exciting to hear that we're all vibrating in this. You know, the more of us that vibrate in this, it's really going to spread because it's, it's not just one person anymore. We are collectively joining mm -hmm. with one another and going, this is where we're going. This is where we're headed. 
And with that, we're going to pull it in. It's so exciting. Thank you, thank you, thank you for these comments. <laughs> well, Lisa, while the spotlight's on you, what's uh, what's the story of the Weevolution you'd like to share? What's really impacted me um, is seeing how the Weevolution has affected a community of people. Um, I started doing med leading meditations, daily meditations in um, Larissa Shakti Love Warrior group on Facebook. Um, it was on March 16th when I had this download that I wanted to share with the world. And after th in that specific download, I didn't mean to, but like out of my mouth, just popped that I would lead 1111 meditations throughout the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> not knowing that it would go on for, I mean, we're at two years now. Um, and in about 90 days in, because I was absolutely my word, I realized that this was an opportunity to embody that message that I had received from Divine Mother when I had asked myself, what can I do to evolve? And she said, there's no more evolving. It's, it's weevolving. There's no more evolution, it's weevolution. And at that time, I didn't really understand when I was first given this information, when I had this direct experience with Divine Mother. And she shared with me that it would be shown, that it would reveal itself if I kept my eyes open to how this could, you know, embody in this world. And I realized I don't need to do this all by myself. I don't need to be the one that carries this torch forever. In fact, that's not the healthiest thing to do. That's kind of a bit of that, you know, savior or martyr. It has those, you know, qualities to it. That this is something that would be beautiful to empower the community to step forth and to be leaders and to lead the meditations. So in doing that, what happened is not only did these beautiful people step forward to lead these meditations, but in stepping forward, I noticed a huge shift, like people started growing exponentially that through actually stepping up and leading these spiritual practices and sharing their journeys that people started dropping into their hearts started healing in different ways emotionally spiritually um, one of our leaders has had some major breakthrough and healing on a physical level because she has major chemical sensitivity and she has noticed that she is shifting and that she is becoming like physically stronger through this process of our community. And it's like, a, it's a spiritual Sangha online and everybody contributes and, and shares, you know, how um, the meditations, how it feels and the shares from the leaders because they share personal stories too. And it's just been remarkable. And like the biggest piece of it for me is that we don't all share the same beliefs necessarily. In fact, you know, as we've gone through this pandemic, people have different beliefs about, you know, vaccine, no vaccine, you know, what it means to be free. And there has been some definite differences in opinions and there's been some rubs, you know, in our group because we're so open and honest about what we feel. But what I've noticed is because of this space of the weevolution and being committed to love leading the way and asking the question, what would love do, which is like foundational in the weevolution for us, is that we have found a way and the people in the group who in the past would have been very combative, in fact, have said, I have completely changed since being in this group. I used to be very judgmental and I'm not anymore. And they've found ways to be supportive, loving, and kind, even in the face of not agreeing on some pretty like found like big issues that could really tear them apart. <clears throat> so that is that is my big takeaway and I'm seeing it continuing to evolve. 
you know, over time. Uh, two things, Luis, and then we'll go to Michelle next. Uh, Mark Danisovsky writes, Larissa is articulating exactly what the Global Peace Tribe is about. We are creating a template for global evolution. We're recognizing our union with the divine mind. We practice here every weekend, and then we share it during the week as we are able. Mark, thank you for that. And I, I just want to alert people to the, the Facebook page. For those of you that use Facebook, please join Larissa's Shakti Love Warriors group. And that's where every morning at 11 o'clock people gather and 11, 11, they drop into meditation. Sometimes Larissa leads it, other times other people lead it. It's a beautiful way to just drop in together. Um, and on Sunday, this Sunday, we're going to um, kind of be combining our Sacred Sunday show with her Love Warriors group and actually do the 11-11. So I guess on Friday nights from now on at 8 o'clock, we will howl. On Saturday nights at 8 o'clock, we'll howl. And on Sundays at 11-11, we'll meditate with Larissa and her Shakti Love Warriors. So definitely join the group for sure. Would love that. Would love that. And by the way, what you're hearing right now is um, Benj is getting out of equipment. I believe he must have a show tonight. A yes. show tonight. So okay. that I did not know. Of. So if you're wondering what's happening, he's. All right. Well, I will. I will mute you for a moment, and we're going to put the spotlight on Michelle. Oh wow, I love I love the comments coming in. Um, it it means so much when we're in a. This feels to me like a very sacred circle. These are so many heart-centered people coming together. Obviously, all of you who are in the chat, we're feeling a call to be here tonight because maybe you were curious what the Weevolution was, or maybe you wanted to be in, in community and connection. And it feels so good to me to see the comments coming in. And, you know, Wanda writes, Larissa, that story reminds me of what Scott and Deborah began with Saturday Night Alive. Little did they know in the beginning what the genesis was, is, and where it would go. And, you know, Scott, when you and Deborah first started Saturday Night Alive, and the thing that I, I really connected with is to see how many of the same people we know and Deborah would Deborah would be texting me and say hey do you have do you have um, James Gilliland's phone number do you have Elizabeth April's phone number there were people I had numbers for that she didn't have and right away I'm connecting her you know and I remember the day when uh, there was a time where I wouldn't give somebody's phone number out because I would say I need to ask them first mm -hmm. but Right now in these times, things are instant. We're wow. we're feeling the um, we're feeling the ramp up of this speed speeding up of time and yeah. and feeling the urgency of what we're all co-creating. That these points of light that we all are in the world are, you know, adding our energies together. It's like one big collective aura, and that's what it sounds like with Global Peace Tribe. And you know, unify. There's so many people on on um, Instagram or on any social media these social media platforms that are finding the resonance, even if they're not always on the same page with their belief systems. Which we did a a program together um, with Trish and. Uh -huh. Larissa, you had invited me to do the um, Integrity Without Judgment, I think it was called. Yeah, exactly. And we all shared on that show, and it was clear that all of us didn't have the same opinions or beliefs on that show. But yet, what I felt us doing was modeling what it looks like to compassionately accept someone else's point of view. And if we were all exactly the same, how boring would this world be? We would be like robots. But I, I, I just want to commend Amalia for, uh, whew, for 
doing what was it what Wanda said, taking that mess and making it a message and keeping your vibration so high in sharing that story. I didn't feel any victimness in you. I felt you a, a, a woman standing in her power and saying, I'm going to use this as a teaching moment to teach others to get out of that, that you know, the archetype of the victim. I've recently been talking about the drama triangle. And I remember doing some research about this word drama triangle or this idea, the drama triangle, and I hadn't visited it in a while. And um, so I went back and, and Googled it and looked it up. And I saw that, you know, in that triangle, there's the victim, the perpetrator and the rescuer. And most of us here tonight probably could identify with every one of those at different points in our life when different circumstances that have come up in our lives. But the key um, with this whole teaching, I, I, from what I understand, I've never taught it personally myself, but what I feel from it is to stay out of each one of those corners of the triangle and to keep yourself in the middle where you're, you're not being the victim, you're not being the rescuer and you're not being the perpetrator. You're maintaining your boundaries, your field, your integrity, your compassion, your empathy. And I really feel like that's, that's what it means to be a human. We're finding so much um, about how quickly technology is trying to surpass consciousness. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think many of us here would agree that while technology is incredible, I mean, these little things that they, they streamline our lives and make things easier. I was able to, to text Scott and say, I can't get into the Zoom. And just like that, I had my Zoom ID because I use that little thing. Um, so technology, we, we can embrace technology. And I think at the same time, really be mindful of how much we're giving away to AI and that system and come back into how important it is to connect with nature and to connect yes. with each other. Yes. In person, connecting with each other. Yes. Zoom is amazing as well, but feeling the heart to heart connection and, and keeping us in compassion. I think that's part of the evolution as well. Beautiful, thank you for sharing yeah. all of that. And, and we're gonna hear from Amakela in a moment. I wanted to just address two things that kind of riff on. Um, I actually teach about the codependency triangle of rescuer, perpetrator, and victim. And you're right, we all have played all of those roles. Yes. And what's interesting is that ultimately, if you play one role too much, you become the other, right? You think you're the rescuer, but you actually become the perpetrator, right? You think you're the victim, but you become the perpetrator, whatever it might be. And I think what I just slightly adjust is that recognizing, oh, I'm falling into victim now. I'm falling into rescuer. I'm falling into, th th this person is experiencing me as a perpetrator. Most of the time, we don't see ourselves as the perpetrator. So it requires being able to see outside of ourselves and, oh, I think I'm the rescuer. My self-concept is I'm the rescuer, but actually, this person is experiencing me as a perpetrator. So it's like learning how to look at the bigger picture and recognize when we're falling into those roles, right? So thank you for bringing that up. And again, that's part of the awakening world. And the last thing I want to say, then I want to hear from Mama Kayla. Awakening is not always fun. Waking up is not necessarily joyful. When we wake up, and realize, oh my God, look at how my choices or my behavior has been contributing to damage of the planet. Look at how my choices or my behavior have been hurting myself or hurting my family or hurting people I love. And it takes courage and all of us holding each other together say, yeah, we all have made choices that have been hurtful. We all have engaged in behaviors that are not sustainable. And it's not because any of us are bad or wrong or certainly not evil. 
We just were ignorant. Yeah. We didn't know. And part of the revolution, part of the awakening world is loving each other and supporting each other to wake up, including the hard stuff. So. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm Michaela. <laughs> hey, hey. Well, you know, it's so interesting, too. Like, I'm sitting here listening to all of the wisdom dripping from all of y'all's mouths. And it's one of those things where, you know, when you think about a triangle and you think about these, these static images, it's such an opportunity to remember that when you pull it into 3D, the triangle becomes a diamond, right? And that's the transformative spark to get into your kaleidoscope diamond mind and start seeing all the different ways to see one particular thing. So it isn't just these three things in the trauma triangle, it's all of these things. It's how we're all reflecting all of these ways of being and all the refractions. And you know, one of the things that I found so exquisite um, in this time in particular is how mama nature put everybody on a timeout. So we have to go sit down and do some reflection, right? And we have to reflect on what we are projecting as well as what we're reflecting. And so I think that it's so um, potent to remember that so much of what we see in ourselves and what we see around around us in the world is how we play into it and looking for the deeper meaning of like, how am I participating in the death of the manatees in Florida? How am I participating in what's happening in Kazakhstan right now? And the story that you asked us to think about while you were reading the comments, I thought about was with respect to the revolution, because again, it's it's the weaving like the mycelial network we're all yeah. talking to one another yeah. everything is connected there's no you are this and i am this and we are this and there's none of that we're all all the things just like we just said about that triangle <clears throat> and one of the things that i thought about was how when i went to palestine this is a this is a crazy story but it's follow me now i went to palestine I, again i told you I, I work with the state department and as a cultural arts ambassador we go to these places where people are experiencing trauma and war and their voices are frozen their bodies are frozen everything's frozen right so i go they drop me in and i do this programming called music is medicine and i bring drums and rattles and i'm this all the whole time i'm there like hey, let's go um, and really like trying to help people move past that distrust and angst and fear and ah you know like when they're in that space where they're frozen and they can't see beyond what's happening right here remembering how the arts and this is one of the things when we were talking about ai the arts, the AI makes a too perfect of a note. There's no grit and gravel. You can't really get these things that are artificial to bring in the nuance of pain. And the nuance of pain plays into how the blues resonates with people, how jazz resonates with people. And that's how people can connect and relate to the heart of life lived, right? And so I went to this place in Palestine and I was working, I was a, as an international celebrity coach. They were doing the first Palestinian idol. I don't know why they thought it would be a good, you know, sometimes people are trying, they try so hard. They're like, let's save the refugee children and put them on stage and make them compete with one another. And like, that was not very smart job. But anyway, okay, we go on. So I went there, I was with all of these refugee children. And one of them was an older boy, he was like 17. And I had worked with them. I was there with them for months and months and months. And I would bring the drums and every day he'd kind of stand off in the corner. He don't want everything to do with me. But he sat there and he listened to me every day, every day, every day, every day. And finally, right before I, would, I was leaving, he came up to me and he said, sit on me. Sit means man. He said, sit on me. Can you teach me how to speak nigger? And I was like, Whoa! Whoa! what's happening? But I had to remember that his definition, like he's not from here. So he doesn't understand necessarily the, the profundity of that word. So I said, what do you mean by that? He said, you know, money, money, hippity hoppity. He wanted to learn how to rap. And so I had to remember that a lot of times, just like with the howling baby inside of the big mama jackal, like we have to remember that people have different ways that they are trying to translate what our dominant culture has given us as these kind of mandates for ways to categorize people, box stuff in, not engage in our kaleidoscope mind, right? We only see the three as opposed to the 12 facets of the diamond. And so I was like, oh, so that's what you're talking about. We had this really 
conversation about you know the history of America and how all these things came to be and et cetera, et cetera. Finally, he said, you know, I was starting to train to be a Unabomber, but you teach me how to drum. So now I want to drum and not bomb. Wow. You better get with it. So, wow. and that <laughs> is the power of singing to that rainbow baby, right? The inner jackal, the, the deep howling child, the one that just wants to understand because we have to remember the social construct that we've all been indoctrinated in doesn't make any kind of sense at all. You ask little children, you know, oh, who, what do you notice about this? They're just pointing out things that they notice. This person has brown skin, this person has not brown skin, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have value placed to it. It's when they grow up in this culture that these things start getting laid on top of them that still might not make sense, but it's systemic. And so part of the work that I do with this organization on the ED4 called World Trust is to talk about these things and using film and the arts and music to help tease out the way that we all can remember our inner baby jackal, the way that we can remember to talk to each other from that kaleidoscope mind, the way that we can be woven in this place of love. And it's so amazing because now we're all away from one another. So we don't have the same kind of, you know, body image stuff. You can see this much of me. We're all in the Brady Bunch Zoom room. You know, the, we're all in the same little squares. And so there's a certain uniformity that happens. And so we have to pay more attention because you can actually see people's micro expressions. You can see their faces. You can hear them more clearly. You don't get caught up in all of the extra distraction. And so we're actually having deeper conversations with people in this kind of space where you have to engage in another way, utilize different senses, be open, but still be removed. It's very interesting to see how it plays out, but it allows for this growth spurt that's happening with people, particularly post George Floyd. So I think it's very poignant to look at how George Floyd and COVID all landed at the same time. It was like kind of like a perfect storm. So it's a very interesting moment to, to look at the invisible and how the invisible plays into the visible and always being awake and aware with all of our antenna, how we are all connected and woven together. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you brought up the, the, you brought up so much, but you brought up like the mycelium, the, the connecting, like how the mushrooms beneath the earth yes. and that conversation, which is like our brain, right? Yes. It's like neural synapses in our brain yes. that when they're all firing, we actually we evolve in a new way because we see, we perceive differently within ourselves. But you better sing it, honey. <laughs> That's right. And don't you know, they, you know, so I teach this, this class at the California Jazz Conservatory called The Power, it's called Songs of songs of freedom and it's all about how protest songs and you think about the 60s when everybody was singing chants together they did a study on people's brains when people sing and chant together and drum together all of your synapses your brain is more on fire and awake and every region is lit up and activated as opposed to one person singing and you're sitting listening or one person yes. drumming and you're sitting when you're all doing it all together everyone is like the we. And this expansion of that that's right the we right and the play which is a huge piece yes. of this in the together and i want to acknowledge more of these comments here i love i love what they're saying in the in the chat room start reading I, it <laughs> it's like it's it's just awesome and i you know we are a we space here mm -hmm. um that's why we're looking at everybody and we're enjoying everybody um and seeing that hold on i just saw something that i wanted to go back to so dia therese says to everyone and transform victim into healer rescuer to counselor and perpetrator to yes. teacher master mm -hmm. and i want to acknowledge that because it's interesting even in our language yes we need to understand the victim and the and um, we need to understand the rescuer and the perpetrator and <laughs> And as we begin to embrace different aspects of who we are, because these there's a lot of um, weightedness in these words. I don't know about you all, but it, there's a lot of like er, angst in those words, like uh, a shame. There's a bit of sh a feeling of shame of being the victim or the shame of, 
of being the rescuer or the perpetrator. And what I loved what Dia shared is how these have this possibility of transmuting and how perhaps in the future, how much faster we can move because of this ability to share in the way we're sharing right now and, and accept and see the unity you know, of all of us into these more expansive, heart opening um, terms, right? And realizing that we're all wisdom keepers. Every one of those roles has knowledge to share. So instead of pigeonholing them and victim, it just happened to me, perpetrator, I'm doing it to you. You know, everyone has something to give and share the wisdom of each of those. Sorry, I had to jump in, girlfriend. Go that's, ahead. I love it. I love <laughs> that's, really, that's so true. Did you see one of the, Jeannie says, I leave the word bomb or weapon out of my language. How else right. can I express? Um, you know, I, I words right now are really important. How we're using our words and the energy mm -hmm. behind them and how we can transform the way that we say things. And we have a joke at, at Awakening Code Radio and in my house as well that we don't need or should anybody anymore. You know, mm -hmm. telling somebody what you need to do or what you should do because it feels like a projection of what somebody else is expecting and it might not land right with the person they're projecting on. So we like to say now, I invite you to consider. Yes. <laughs> rather than, yes, we, we open the invitation. So yes. And I also love, and it's interesting because here's different ways of working with language because language creates spells, you know, spelling and language. Mm -hmm. Um, is Mark says to you that you gave that kid a love bomb. You were the target, but you disarmed him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we, we can also look at how can we change these words into positive, put positive, you know, reclaim them in ways as well, mm -hmm. you know, cause mm -hmm. who wouldn't want a love bomb, right? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know, let's let's turn it like we have a this opportunity now because of the conversation that we're having as a collective an awareness. We have this the conversation is giving us deeper connections and insights even faster. You know, the ahas are going like this, like the mycelium, right? Mm -hmm. It's like boom, boom, boom as we share and we begin to see that we can choose differently and create differently. And it's mm -hmm. so exciting. Yeah. It and so, <laughs> that's right. And so back to that one comment that was about like, what do I do instead of the word bomb? Fierce explosiveness. And it, you know, again, it depends on like how you want to use that word. Like there is actual bombs. And so if you're describing an actual event, use the word. But if you're trying to say someone is the bomb, honey, you the bomb. Instead of saying you're the bomb, be like, you are you have some fierce explosiveness going on in your world. You know, like <laughs> turn it into that way. And it gets really fun. Like you get really creative. Like, hmm, what can I say instead of that? Yeah, look at right? what yeah. Eleanor says. Eleanor just typed in the chat. What about saying a love bomb? Ooh. Ooh. Like, oh, that's awesome. Tasty yes. treat, Eleanor. Nice. Good call. Love it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I love it too. For real. I'm going to show a few wonderful things. Um, we have with us, of course, Michelle Anderson, and she does Awakening Code Radio. And you can find it, um, so I'm already following it, but if you go there on Facebook, just put in your Facebook search bar, Awakening Code Radio. And while I've got this up, Michelle, tell us a little bit about what happens and what takes place when we tune into Awakening Code Radio. About Thank you. That talk about modeling the weave illusion, Scott. That's so <laughs> I love it. And you can see we have Larissa Stowe's call, song "Calling Back My Spirit" there on on our oh, wow. Facebook page. Um, well, Awakening Code Radio started in 2012 when my radio partner Eric Rankin had this idea to um, start a kind of like a spiritual talk show for awakening and he originally called it soul searching radio 
And then, and this was on a, a newly formed FM radio station in Laguna Beach, California, where there's no reception for FM. So we're the only FM radio station on 104.7. You can only hear on 104.7 in Laguna. Otherwise, you go to kxfmradio.org. And that's the website where people can listen in live. So we're on every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And we're podcasted on all the major podcast platforms. Um, but we've had people like Greg Braden, Nassim Harriman, Robert Grant, Gene Houston. Um, we've, we've had Larissa. Larissa comes on at least once a year since 2012. We're going into our 10th year. And you know, the, the tagline is conversation and music to raise the vibration. Mm -hmm. And we have had so many incredibly insightful guests on our show. And think back to 2012, there wasn't a lot of people podcasting in 2012. Yeah. Um, we're still volunteers. We don't do it to make money. We haven't, Eric and I don't make money off of KXFM or off of Awakening Code Radio. Um, I hear that they've started doing some sponsors, sponsored ads, and there was some money built up. And we on the air gave the money that had been built up. It was $888. And we gave it to our third, who is Colleen. Colleen, admin, we call her admin Colleen, Colleen of Chrome Hearts. She's a graphic design artist and she's the one that keeps, I really feel like she's the backbone of Awakening Code Radio. So I guess you could say that's a modeling of sorts of the Weevolution that we, we became this dynamic trio and it, I don't think the show would be the same without any one component of it. You know, we've just all kind of melded and made it what it is. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to say that. We also have on snippet.fm, um, last year they launched another, a spinoff of Awakening Code. It's called The Awakening Code, and it's a shorter 20 minute highlights of some of the highlights that our guests that have been on have shared with us. Like I wow. think the first one we did was with Marianne Williamson, the first snippet show. We they went back into our old files and edited shows to make them more snippets instead of conversation, you know, like for two hours or an hour, just a 20 minute show of just some golden nuggets. So um I didn't even know about snippet, but I just went there and here it is. You go to snippet.fm. And look at right up at the top is the awakening code. The age of Aquarius, the dawn of a new era, the shift. We are living in a time full of both promise and challenge. And so if you click on that, you can get little snippets. Um, Dom and her, Jonathan Goldman, Dr. Selma Diaz, Ray Indigo, there's James Redfield, Nassim, Greg Braden, Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, all of our friends. You've got all of our <laughs> friends there. Exactly. And and while we're talking about this revolution and modeling and sharing, you did mention that I do work with Portal to Ascension and Neil Gore. He's doing a, a live in-person event in October in San Diego, and he's already got some great speakers lined up. Um, Foster Gamble will be with us, Joan of Angels, Robert Schock, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, Shariah is going to be with us as well. And Disclosure Fest, I don't know if you're aware of what, what I do with Disclosure Fest, but DisclosureFest.org, Adrian Valera started Disclosure Fest, and it's really a modeling of the Weevolution as well. That's why I love to work with both Adrian and Neil, because they have absolutely no ego, and their agenda is only to bring people together in the spirit of awakening consciousness and being in a in a place of awareness. But what what um, what Adrian does is a mass meditation. And in 2019, we did Disclosure Fest as a donation only event at Los Angeles State Historic Park. And we had 20,000 people there. And 
we had so many people go back to the front after they had had their experience. We had 16 stages on 32 acres. Naka was one of our performers. We reunited Freedom Tribe to play. Um, and it wasn't just a festival with musicians, but we had yoga. We had a whole Bhakti Fest stage. We had a Portal to Ascension stage and it was all collaborative. Nassim Harriman had his own booth and gave, gave a talk. I, I produced the Star Ancestor space with all of the indigenous and we had the the friendship dance with everybody dancing together to the beat of the drums and with the um, Aztec dancers it, it was absolutely amazing and this year we're planning to do it again June on the summer solstice at Los Angeles State Historic Park in person so <laughs> while you were talking i did pull it up for people to look at if you go to disclosurefest.org then click where it says mass meditation and there's the picture of what she was describing you can see all the different stages and all the different people in los angeles so i definitely will look forward to being there in october and yeah um you know all the people you're talking about you know one of the things that's been really cool about this pandemic time I was born and raised in Los Angeles, and I was in the entertainment industry at a very early age. And when I was growing up, it was a very competitive industry, extremely competitive. And I grew up with that, a lot of that competitive stuff. But I got to say that in the two years when the pandemic hit, all the people you're talking about, Adrian, Neil, yourself, um, the big shots like Deepak and Marianne, we all have been supporting each other and everybody's been helping everybody else out and we've all been promoting each other's thing. And I have seen very, 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 very little competitive energy. Instead, it's been very compersive, very collaborative. Um, and that right there is we are evolving. <laughs> we yeah. are evolving. It's are. It really is happening. Yeah. It's um, destiny. <laughs> it's, de you know, just as when we're born, we go through a whole growth cycle. You know, we become toddlers and adolescents and teenagers and young adults. Our collective consciousness, I believe, is, has been in the toddler stage for a very long time. And as you can see by how the, the me, mine, and looking to authority all the time, looking on the outside for answers rather than turning within. But this is this is the time. This is a time that we make that evolutionary leap of consciousness into I, what I call the sacral chakra, like moving from that root chakra into the sacral sacral chakra of that 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 time of liberation and connection. You know, reaching out and connecting to your peers and starting to see your peers as having gifts to receive. Um, and yeah, I could see a lot more about that, but I think it's, you know, it's just destined. We are going through a developmental, you know, leap, birthing into the, the next level of who we are destined to be as a collective. I'm, I'm gonna read a few more comments and then Larissa, maybe let's talk about what's happening tomorrow night. And then we'll give Amakiel and Michelle a, a last chance for whatever they want to share. Um, a lot of appreciations coming in and it's just so awesome. Uh, all of you, it, this has been a really beautiful first Friday night. Um, and I want to send a big love out to Trish, who's been my co-host on Friday nights for the last year and a half. And she'll be back next week. Next week, it's all about MLK weekend. And we've got some really great guests coming and uh it's really this this is fun doing it as a zoom meeting and, and being able to see all of you some of you at least so just reading a few of the comments um um uh wanda writes yes larissa it could be the toddler stage or perhaps dormant we've had to remove the layers um terry russo writes the global peace tribe has been the glue since covid thank you um Wanda, thank you. Michelle, that is so awesome. 10 years. I can only imagine how many folks you have touched. Absolutely. Um, and Wanda also writes, we are expanding and sharing thoughts because we are in a safe space. 
Jeffrey Kohlbrook always reminds us of uh, the work of Nassim Harriman and the Levolution, and he writes, changing random evolution of mutations to or being part of this learning universe of evolution. Absolutely. Somebody needs to mute, by the way, because um, we're getting an echo or everybody can just check and mute themselves. Thank you. Okay. We're in a Zoom meeting. We can hear each other when we unmute. That's how connected we all are. A couple last things. Mark Danisovsky, I always love what you have to say, Mark. High velocity expansion of overwhelming love. I'm going to say that again. Take it in. This is a high velocity expansion of overwhelming love. That mm -hmm. is the revolution. So a um, couple of uh, suggestions that were made. Uh, JD writes about a children's book called The Circle of Wonder, Predator and Prey Animals Together at the Fire Circle. White Feather writes, there is no fight or fighting. And which world are we feeding? The only thing is love. Um, and the last thing, our beloved mystic Abbot Jerry, who I'm going to put on spotlight for a moment. Uh, Jerry wanted to point out uh, a wonderful, um, something he just discovered, a hundred soul connection quotes, soul connection quotes. And isn't that true? You know, we really are experiencing, this is a new uh, website. It's K-I-D-A-D-I.com. Kid, K-I-D-A-D-I.com. Kittle. And thank you, Jerry, for sharing that. You are a beloved soul connection. Uh, he started watching Saturday Night Live. He reached out to me, and he's definitely part of our family. Larissa, I've seen Larissa around for, we've been at festivals and taught at the same places together, but it wasn't until COVID and Love Coach Academy and Saturday Night Live and all coming together. So there is a wonderful way that we are coming together as tribe. Um, and creating these beautiful soul connections. So with that, I'm turning it over to you, Larissa. I would love to actually invite Veronica. Um, I've known Veronica for years and she has, in, she has birthed a, a new um, idea to, to make a difference and to create more of the Weevolution. So I would love to have her speak to that as you asked our people if they have right. <laughs> Veronica. Yes, thank you. One. Thank you so much, Larissa, for this opportunity. I just want to, um, and this is my, I'm so blessed to have uh, uh, been introduced to the, this group. I'm just learning so much. And, and as a nurse, I too, as am a nurse, I think Terry, I saw on the chat is a nurse and I've been working on the COVID unit for many years. Um, and so it prompted me to want to help the COVID nurses because they are so overworked, stressed out. And as you may have seen on the news that burnout um, is prevalent and they're lose, leaving their jobs. Many people are leaving their jobs. And um, so I'm starting initiating at my hospital. Uh, it's called the Mindfulness Minute. And what that is, is, you know, to ask the nurses to go to a class or leave the floor or do anything that's going to take a lot of their time is not reasonable right now. But I know that we all have one minute. And if we can take one minute to disconnect from what I call the crazy train, because we're so unconscious when we are working, because it's just a task, 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 and task after task. But if we could just step off, take a breath and pause. Feel your feet connected to the earth. Feel your, your um, crown chakra opening and connected to all that is. And you just stop for that one minute. It can physiologically make a huge difference in your body. It stops that uh, fight or flight. Even if you stop that fight or flight for one minute, the cortisol levels will drop in your body. And you can start becoming more present. Isn't it great to have a present nurse? Yes, that yes. would be really great. <laughs> so you can be present to what's in front of you. And it's and, and studies have shown, because I did a lot of research on this, studies have shown that my, a mindful nurse makes less mistakes. 
and that we want that as well. So that's my project that I've been working on. Larissa has been guiding me as well. And um, I'm really excited to bring this um, to more nurses and to more hospitals. Yes. It's very, very exciting. And I, yes. I, I get inspired when I hear you talk about it because it's like, it's this idea, you know, of, of reaching out. It's like reaching out to the nurses as a collective mm -hmm. and together, yes. you know, lifting everybody up you know, creating from what you want rather than focusing on what you don't want. It's like, let's create more mindfulness. Let's create more love and, and connection to our heart and presence and connection to our patients. And that's what you're doing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, yes, yes, this is what we need in the world. We need nurses like Veronica, you know, who <laughs> spread you. this and we need all <laughs> hospitals, you know, and not only Thank for you. the it to have the nurses do it, but we need this for the patients too, and have the nurses sharing this with the patients. Yes, absolutely. That's my goal. Connection, right? Deeper yeah. empathy, and that way, more human connection. Mm -hmm. That's my goal is that they they do it at the bedside and and invite the patients to join them in the mindfulness minute. That's what I would love to see, and so that's my vision. And then and then everyone's doing it at the same time. So. That's what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yes, vision. Yes. Thank we you. just we just had someone on our show that shared a three breath op heart opening where before he does anything in his webinars, and I think this would be good to fit into that one minute, is what you just said about the crown and bringing the energy up. So he he gives you the visualization. It was Brian Besco bringing the energy of the earth up through your feet and into your heart and you're picturing your heart as as the flame the spark of life and yes. then on the next breath you're bringing the energy from creation to meet inside of your heart and on the third breath you're merging them all and it just opens the heart and i could feel my heart opening while you were talking about this mindfulness minute so thank you for doing that and thank Absolutely. you for all that you're doing in the way that you're serving we appreciate you so much hmm. thank you thank you so, I, my heart opened as you were just explaining that process so thank you <laughs> <laughs> comments for you veronica um almost sure writes well done veronica I did the process as you spoke it, and I felt an immediate relief and a heightening of my awareness. And then Wanda writes, Veronica, I'm just wondering if you hand that nurse a peppermint to enjoy during the process. Somebody just wrote, um, if you hand somebody, uh, somebody popped in and so now it changed my chat box. Uh, where is it? I can help. It says if you want me to. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Just wondering if you hand that nurse a peppermint to enjoy during that mindful minutes. There's something about a peppermint that enhances the moment. <laughs> yes. I love that idea. Yes. There's actually mindfulness eating um, processes that you can do. So you could actually mindfully eat the peppermint and, and have ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> do that <laughs> you know one of the wonderful things is that we have people coming from all over the world and i'm going to put the spotlight on my friend krishna who's coming to us from australia um and uh krishna has something he wants to share so here's krishna from australia hello everybody hello Scott, thank you for having me larissa thank you for having me can you see me hear me yep yes beautiful Larissa, I love the words with which you speak. I, I'm feeling so inspired. It's in mm. in the world today. There is so much polarization going on. So much. Let's make this person's wrong. My opinion's right. Their opinion's wrong. And then, of course, when we've got governments telling us what to do, it it amplifies all of that. And and I think how opportune that you bring this up today here with this group, this revolution. It's about evolution, not, not revolution, not about making everyone wrong or changing it. So I want to start by saying namaste. Mm, namaste. The light in me, the light in me bows before the light in you. The mm. divinity in me bows before the divinity in you. And something thank I've you. learned, thank you. Something I've learned is 
when we approach the world, sometimes we see a divine mirror of ourselves in the other person and we don't know it and we judge them. Mm -hmm. And something I've learned from you, Scott, is That's when right. we judge someone, we lose all ability to influence them. That's right. When we love someone, we then have a chance to influence them. Mm -hmm. And what That's if right. the world was okay just the way it was? We don't need to change it. Happy to raise the level of consciousness. That's great. Yeah. But gosh, it's perfect the way it is. This is why we're here. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's thank you, Krishna. beautifully said. Beautifully said. And your vibration is beautiful, by the way. Thank you, Larissa. So, Larissa, I'm okay. And you're okay. And everyone's okay. That's right. Thank, thank you. you for that beautiful reminder, beloved Krishna, that home that you're seeing, I've actually spent a month in that home a few years ago. Uh, and I've been there a few times in my life. So I look forward to my next trip. But until then, thank goodness for Zoom, where we can get to uh, connect with you. Thank you, Krishna. We are almost at nine o'clock. Um, so uh, I want to thank everybody for being with us. I know we haven't had a chance to read everybody's comments. But this is just the first of three experiences that Larissa and I are co-creating uh, through Global Peace Tribe. Larissa, tell us about what's going to happen tomorrow night. Well, we have Michelle's going to be back on tomorrow night as well. And with a lot of beautiful, um, beautiful beings that model, I would say, that are modeling the evolution in different ways. And so that we can experience more of like, what does this mean? What does this feel like? And giving examples, you know, of what the evolution feels like in life and how we can bring it into the world even more. Um, Jody Potaker has actually been here and been tuning in and she's one of our speakers presenters tomorrow, but she's in her pajamas right now because she has COVID. So, and she's I'm busted. I'm busted. <laughs> you are busted. Let's yes. let's send her some healing love and energy. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. We love you. We love you. We love you. And I love that you're here. Oh, yay. See, this is this is one of the the foundational values of the Weevolution is authenticity, right? Courageous yeah. vulnerability and authenticity, <laughs> which you are showing up in, in your humanity. Yes. And I love that. Thank I you. That. Yes, Thank here you. I am. <laughs> and you look radiant. You do. In your Thank cozy you. pajamas. I love yes. those. Those are so Yes, they're so mama so pajamas. Thank you. They're very soft. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love those. My I love those too. Me, mama llama. I was like, I, I love those. Well, listen, half of us are wearing yoga pants or pajama bottoms. We may look great from the top up, but we're all wearing like comfy stuff on the bottom here. So. Yes. <laughs> oh, You're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. I feel better. Yes. And so I, you I will accept. see Jody. I and who know. knows, we'll see what she chooses to wear tomorrow night. <laughs> yes. This is right. Yes. This is true. Exactly. So I, I'm we're kind of inspired now. So. Fantastic. Fantastic. And we're we're inspired to have you on the show and, and sharing about your movement within the Weevolution and what you've, you know, spearheaded. And, and in that spearheading, though, have lifted others up around you. So excited. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. <laughs> um, we also tomorrow night are going to have um, Charles Eisenstein and um, there's a beautiful video so for those of you who have joined um, as members of Global Peace Tribe you get the, the Zoom room link just like this come on in at 530 because for our early show we're going to show this beautiful beautiful video all about it's an animated 10 minute video about how we all kind of came to this world with a purpose. And um, we're going to start our early show with that video and then talk about it 
Charles is going to be with us, and he's a beautiful man uh, and a very wise soul. So we have Charles, and we've got, as always, music. Uh, Larissa and Ben, you're going to sing. Um, and then your friend Terrell is going to do some spoken word. And yes. Jason Firth is going to play music for us as well. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm excited to share these beautiful beings that have been a part of the Weevolution. And really, I mean, we all are. But when we start to recognize that and start to really spread the distinctions of what that means, it gets that much more exciting because then we're like, yes, <laughs> how can we do more of this? How can we lift each other up? How can we create more of what we want rather than what we don't want in this world? How do we pull that frequency so much, raise our vibration so much we actually, you know, inspire it into that fifth dimension and yes. it's destined, it's happening. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to show a couple of little posters. Here's the poster for tomorrow night. And of course, it'll be Louisa and Michelle again, Charles Eisenstein, Nierka, Jason Firth, Jody, who you just saw, um, Susan Huff, who put on Michaela on the poster because she's with us tonight. We're so glad that you've been able to join us. Oh my on. gosh, so excited about having on Michaela here. I wish you were on tomorrow night too. <laughs> You know, we, we got her two nights in a row. Oh, Michaela was on our show last night. Oh, um, fantastic. You know, a wonderful show with Christy Michaels and Gary Malkin. And so I'm blessed I got two nights in a row with with you, Oh, Michaela. Thank you all Love so you. much. Love you. Love you, Michaela. Love you, Michaela. Any final thoughts? I, you know what? I, I want to sing one little song. Just oh, to good. Of Oh, send good. you all off like a little lullaby and it's written by my godmother carolyn brandy and it's just about how we're all under the same sun and moon and to the oceans the rivers the gentle breeze the storming thunder the earth paths and crossroads the herbs and medicines snow-capped mountains and to all the elements we give them our respect and our gratitude to be amongst them by whatever names they might be called or worship our humanity is our gift and our birthright as it is for every human growing as a seed under light of sun and moon. We are all growing as a seed under light of sun and moon. Growing as a seed under light of sun and moon. Aww. Oh, I wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm so glad that I got to be here with all of you all. And I just send you all beautiful rainbow unicorn heart love rays. Boo, 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 boo. Thank I'm you. so Thank you. honored to be a part of the Weevolution. And um, I hope you all have a great weekend and a fabulous every single solitary day and a fabu 22 y'all yeah <laughs> I'd, like I'd like to give a shout out to melissa who is suffering and sick at home in maryland i think that's where she lives she mm. was writing in and connie baxter marlowe she's writing to me gave me a direct message i'm glad she's still wearing the bracelet i gave you connie and she um i want to share that she wrote a book called the trust frequency she co-wrote this book called the trust frequency with andrew cameron and it's a very powerful book and it it's again modeling how we live in this frequency of trust and we're trusting that the evolution is taking us to that next level of evolution. So Connie, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm so glad you're here. It's great to be here and wonderful to see you and hear all that you're doing, Michelle, and your show. It was great being on your show with you and all you folks are just taking us to that frequency. So let's go. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. 
Love from what Andrew. What did Barbara Marks Hubbard love to see all of what's happening right now? Oh yeah, she's yeah. right here with us all. Totally, I can. I really feel that. I really feel that because she kind of kicked this off. I don't know if you're aware of who Barbara. I'm sure all of you are aware of Barbara Marks Hubbard, aren't you? Yeah. Of course. Think about. I I kind of feel that essence. You know, this is the next step of what she kind of kicked off as well too. So. My gosh, exciting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is, who can sleep now? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Michelle, for coming on. Oh my gosh. You thank you just for having me. I just, you know? I, you, you've given me such pep in my step now. I, I, I really, I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to coming back on tomorrow night with everybody. So I hope to see everybody tomorrow night. Absolutely tomorrow night so that's 5 30 early zoom room show six o'clock <laughs> is when the main show begins and we've got a wonderful after show planned for tomorrow night uh jay mayer and light touch she's got uh fanny and vigari are going to play music and some fun videos and then the very last thing i just want to remind everybody of is our sacred sunday show it'll be like this it'll be a zoom meeting and larissa and i are going to welcome her partner jason and my dear friend, Eden Amadora, and we're gonna talk about what are some of the tools, what are some of the ways that we can live at these higher levels of weevolution. So um, it's gonna be a, it's a weevolution weekend. Uh, so I'm so glad all of you were with us. Oh, too. oh, and Satyana too. Satyana is gonna be with us on Sunday. That's right, tell us about Satyana because she joined us after we made the poster, so. Yes, yes. Our beloved Satiana, um, she now lives in France, but she has birthed this incredible program for families. It's it's the we, and if, Michelle, you would eat probably, you have more of a relationship with that, her program than I do. I know, <laughs> I'm sitting here going, what? I wish I would have looked up what it is. Um, oh my God, it's amazing. Why she, are we, with children it, and families. I mean, yes. bottom line, it's just, it's completely the weevolution, but within the world of families. Helping, helping people, connection. helping. What she does is helps parents who want to become parents really identify their strengths, their weaknesses, where they really fine tuning how they're going to co parent together and um, great relationship, you know, relationship information and. It really, I, I'm so glad I didn't know that she was going to be with you on Sunday. And yeah, and she's a powerhouse. Like our Satyana, is. she is a powerhouse of inspiration and in raising the vibration. Yes. So, and creating the weed. Like she brought Susan Huff and I did, together actually because um, she had a, a green Valentine's Day event that was all about bringing nonprofits and special like outreach um, in the community together and our band performed there and I met Susan who is connected to um, Sabant Fusome that some of you may know who is like the ambassador brought the grief rituals um, to the United States from the Dagara tribe. So Susan connected me um, to Saban Fu and Susan and I became really incredible friends and she does amazing things in the world, but it was because of Satyana. So everybody is, we're, there's a lot of interconnectedness here. A lot of weaving lot of there. And a lot I, of weaving I think that, happening, right? I, it's so great. And that's where I met Susan as well. And Satyana is the one who introduced me to you, Larissa. That's how I found out about you and went to your first concert because of Satyana. She's an amazing connector. And this, I'm so happy to hear this because she started the school is called IWE. Remember? IWE. Yes, IWE. I That's right. Mm. Yeah. So, so we're we're yeah. all vibing it. It's all. Oh, it's an amazing weekend. It's an amazing life. It's thank an amazing you. awakening world. Thank you for Louisa. Thank that. you so much. Get a good night's rest. We got a big day tomorrow. Yes, um, thank you, Scott. And, thank you, everyone. Uh, big love, everybody. Good Have fun. a wonderful oh, evening. God. Spread the word. Invite your friends. Let's really grow this tribe, all right? Let's thank grow you, this Scott. tribe. Thank you, Scott.
right. Good night, everybody. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to gallery view one last moment here. There we go. Look at all these beautiful souls. Look at all these wonderful, wonderful people from all over the world. Um, God's blessings. Good night, everybody. So much love to everyone tonight. Mwah. See you tomorrow. Good night, friends. Soul family.